In this demo, I am going to explain and also show you how to use the hand building technique known as solid construction or also known as cut and gut. Solid construction is a great technique to use for organic shapes or something that you want to make where you think you would struggle to get the right proportions if you were using slabs or coils. So if you were doing a human figure or a bust or a dog or a rabbit. I'm gonna do a pumpkin. So I'm just gonna take some of my soft clay and I've already shaped it into a round shape, but you're just gonna pull out some soft plastic clay right from your bag of clay and start to shape it. So if you were doing the bunny, you would probably take about two or three times this amount of clay and start to just shape a solid, more oval shape. But for the pumpkin, I'm just gonna do a more round shape. This is a great technique to use if you wanna do a bust. You could start to sculpt the bust in a solid mass, start to do your ears, your facial features, and all of that. Then just don't do the hair yet, and you could cut the back side of the head and gut down in. Then you could replace that. If you can't get all the way down through the shoulders, you can just gut up from the bottom to thin that portion out. And then you would score where you cut that head off, score both sides, slip it, put it back on, then continue to add slabs for your hair, some texture, coils, whatever you're using to create the hair. So for me and my pumpkin, I am going to tap a flat spot so it's gonna rest on a table. I want to do a little bit of further shaping to add some detail. So I'm going to mark about the center of the top, about the center of the bottom. So I just took my wooden tool, just made a little mark and another little mark. Then I have a wooden rib and I'm just going to take that wooden rib and I'm gonna push in and make a ridge from the top of that to the bottom of that. Now I'll move over about a half inch, do the same thing. Now I have some ridges and it's starting to take on more of the appearance of a pumpkin. I could keep shaping the clay and giving it a little more texture, changing these up a little bit, just to start making it look a little bit more realistic. So you can add as much detail as you want and change things up as much as you want. So once you get your form, in proportion and looking the way that you want it. Obviously for something like a pumpkin, that can happen fairly quickly. But if you were doing your dog or a teddy bear or a figure or a bust, that's gonna take a little bit longer. So this technique is really great for anything that is gonna be larger in mass because you need to be able to reduce that mass but you can build solidly to help get your proportions. And then you can cut those parts, gut them and put them back together. So then they are going to dry quicker and be more likely to make it through the kiln firing process without any issues. But I do now need to make a stem. So I'm gonna take some more of my wet clay and I'm just gonna start to shape the stem. Then 
the stem is going to be thin enough. It's less than an inch. So there's no reason that I would have to cut this half in half and gut it. So anything that's smaller on your form can be less solid. So like if you were doing a bunny that was about the size of the bunny in that image I showed, its legs would be thin enough where you wouldn't have to cut and gut them. And the ears most definitely, because the ears you could certainly form like I'm forming the stem just by taking some clay and starting to shape it and pinch it into a shape that might be what you want. Or you could roll out a slab and cut out a shape. As you can see, you could start to easily shape some ears. pretty good. So now I have to cut and gut this solid mass, but not the stem. So this stem is pretty thin, especially this part of the clay where I squeeze to be very thin. It's about an eighth of an inch. So I want, would want to cover this because I don't want it to get any harder than leather hard because I am going to have to come back in and score and reattach it. If there is a space that you made this fit on here where you would like it, you could certainly trace that with your needle tool so you know where you're going to put it back on your form. Or you could just make a mark down the actual stem onto the pumpkin so later when you go to reattach it, you can line it back up. I'm gonna set this aside now. It's okay to leave it out to let it become leather hard, but you don't want it to get too dry, so you are gonna wanna keep it covered because it is gonna dry pretty quick. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to cut this in half and gut it. This clay is still pretty soft, so I wanna leave this to set aside so when I go to cut it, I'm not going to be squeezing and misshapening it. So this form I made yesterday and I let it set out for a number of hours. So it stiffened up. So now when I handle it, I'm not misshapening it or pressing my fingers into it and leaving indentations. So now we need to decide where we are going to cut this so we can gut it. Since this is a fairly simple form and pretty symmetrical, I just have to do one cut. More complex forms are gonna require that you do more cuts. So for this form, I'm gonna choose where I'm gonna cut it. I don't wanna cut horizontally because when I go to put the two sides back together, I'm gonna have a seam and I don't wanna see evidence of my seam line on all of my ridges. So I do want to cut it vertically. Also, if I can do it, it would be great to make my cut on the inside of one of these ridges versus doing it right on the top of one of these ridges. Because once again, when these two sides go back together, you're going to have a seam and you really want to try to hide any evidence of that seam. Okay, so I think these two match up pretty well. So I'm going to take my needle tool and I'm gonna make a line, which is gonna serve as a track for my wire cutter. So the wire can rest in this line as I make my cut. So you wanna take your wire and you wanna thread part of it down. You wanna have the wooden part rest on the bottom or somewhere where you can stabilize it with your fingers. Then you're going to place the rest of the wire. So I'm kind of holding that wooden dowel in place with my thumb. I'm going to put the rest of the wire in place and I'm going to pull one end until it reaches the opposite end. 
and I have my two sides. Now you'll notice when you cut your form open, the clay that's on the inside is still very soft and it's able to be dented pretty easily. So a lot of the time you're gonna wanna leave this open and let this clay stiffen up a little bit.